let's give you a tip for every single Clash of Clans troop that there is. This video will act as a quick fire guide telling you the best methods and some tips that you might not have thought of. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I am your host Judo Sloth. In this one we will start with the Barbarian, move to the Archer, then the Giant, you get the idea. We will go through every single Clash of Clans troop and give you a tip for all of them. What are their strengths, their weaknesses, how should you use them and this is applicable for any Town Hall level. So if that's the type of content you like to see, I try and bring educational but entertaining Clash of Clans videos, I'd recommend subscribing and turning on the notification bell. You can also help to support me in game by using code JUDO, but let's get into the first troop. Starting off with the Barbarian, the icon of Clash of Clans. Predominantly at lower level, you want to use him as part of the Barch strategy. This is where you use the Barbarians in order to tank because he has greater hit points, followed by archers to shoot over the walls in order to get you that loot. How about higher up though? How could you use the Barbarian in war? Well, because he is only a single housing space, if you want to lure clan castle troops as cheaply as possible, you might actually be able to deploy the Barbarian inside its radius and pull them out because he has the greatest hit points for a single housing space. Moving along to the Archer, she is a ranged troop. And whilst you can use her as part of the Barch strategy we just mentioned, make sure you utilize the range to your benefit. You might be able to snipe buildings. All that means is that you are taking the building down without your archer being at danger. In this example, all of the archers are out of range of the defenses, so they can take down the buildings to set up the funnel. But in many cases, this can be used to purely clean up buildings. But there is one other amazing benefit to this range as well. Pulling a Lava Hound, why exactly is that important? Well, if you were to battle against an enemy Lava Hound in the middle of the base, you've got all the defenses firing at you as well. Maybe Dragons, Lava Loon, whatever you're attacking with. If you can deal with the Lava Hound after you've taken out the defenses, then that's obviously a good thing. So where does the Archer come in? Well, what you will do is deploy the Archer at the other side of the base, again out of range, and the Lava Hound will be drawn across cross to it. The archer only being one troop capacity and outranging the defenses is the most efficient way to do this. For the giants, you really just want to use them as high hit point troops. They have a lot of health, so place them in to absorb the fire from the defenses. Then you can use high damage troops such as wizards behind them. If you are a lower level, you might want to consider the giant healer strategy, big pack of giants healed by the healers with the wizards to support. Now this video is focusing on attacking, but giants might be something you consider in your clan castle to defend with if you are a lower level because they have the higher hit points. Let me know down in the comments if you would like me to do a video on clan castle troops. We move on to the Goblin, very important for farming. You might want to stick with the Barch strategy which we have referenced, or an alternative is to take mass Goblins. This is if you want to speed farm. You can quickly place the Goblins in onto the mines and pumps on the outside of the base, and they will do times two damage. But a really good strategy to use as well is the Goblin Knife, particularly if you want to farm Dark Elixir. How this works is you carve out the base free of resource buildings until you can get direct access via a jump spell to the dark elixir storage. Make sure you are testing where the goblins will go. You can see the icon marking around the dark elixir storage means that the goblins are indeed attracted towards it. So make sure you don't spam the troops in too quickly and miss. Once you do have that access, you might want to use a rage spell to make sure the goblins Goblins take it down, and as an added bonus, remember the town hall being a storage is vulnerable to goblins. Ah, the wall breakers. These are actually one of the most difficult troops to use in Clash of Clans, so if you can get the hang of them, it will really up your game. They do exactly what they say they do. They break walls. Now, the difficulty here is understanding that wall breakers are attracted to buildings not 
walls. This is your main tip for the wall breakers. This wall breaker is attracted to the wizard tower. That's why it is shooting at this piece of wall. If the wizard tower was not there, it would go to a different part of the wall. So do bear that in mind when you are deploying your wall breakers. It's not quite as simple as that though. As you do get further through the game, you will meet walls that require multiple wall breakers. So you have to send a few of them in and you probably want to send one ahead of the pack. This is known as a test wall breaker. It tests for a small bomb on the outside of the base because that one little bomb could take out a huge amount of wall breakers. The way you can counteract it is sometimes with a rage spell, but make sure the test wall breaker gets to the area you want and it also checks where the wall breaker will go. But again, make sure you don't take down the building behind the wall ahead of time because your wall breakers will redirect. The final point is if you're higher up, make sure you're freezing multi-target infernos because they can take down wall breakers before they get to the wall. The balloon is an air troop which will target defenses. A really good tip for you is to use this as part of a Coco Loon method. Similar to the test wall breaker, you send one balloon in to try and find black bombs and protect your other troops. In this case, healers as part of a queen walk. Now that's because the healers are worth 14 housing space. Meanwhile, the balloon is only worth five. You could use this in front of any higher HP troop whether it be dragons, e-drags, even a siege machine to help you out. The balloons are also pivotal in the lava loon strategy. Whilst I won't get into this method in this video, you send the lava hound in with all of the rest of the balloons around swarming the defenses, but I want you guys to remember that balloons attack faster on their first strike, so make sure you send enough balloons to one-shot a defense. The wizard is a very vulnerable troop. It doesn't have a lot of hit points, but it packs a punch. You can use it to set up the funnel if there are any free buildings to snipe or often as cleanup once your hog riders have taken out the ground defenses. That's because again, they have really high amounts of damage to clean up the buildings fast. You can also use the wizard as we mentioned earlier behind a tank style troop, whether that be golems, giants, ice golems, in order to take out the buildings around that extremely fast. The healers are actually one of the most used troops in competitive play. They do exactly what they say they do, they heal your troops. Now we've already briefly mentioned the Queen Walk, which by the way, I will do a full video for, so be sure to subscribe to see that. But I recently did a video on this, the Grand Warden Walk. I will link that video at the end of this one for you. However, my tip for the healers is that whenever you use the Rage spell, which you will end up doing in these hero walks, make sure that you use the Rage to encompass both the healers and the hero. You want to try and get the Rage spell so the healers are just inside it and they will move into it. If you are doing a Grand Warden walk, remember that the healers can often switch onto your main army, which is good because they actually do a splash healing effect. For the dragons, I'm going to try and give you a couple of different tips because it's all about setting up the attack for the dragons. Because they are one of the main powerhouses and they will move into the base themselves, use your heroes to funnel. So notice how the right and the left of the base has been taken out, whereby the dragons will now just swoop through. We know exactly where they are going to go. They will attack anything, so that's why you generally deploy them in a line like this, where they can just all move through together. My other point is the air defense have to be your priority. So notice how the rage spell powers the dragons through all of the defenses up until the air defense. They are still raged when they are taking it down, but after the air defense is down, that's the main threat, so the rage spell can fizzle out a little bit. You want to use the rage to get the dragons to the air defense as soon as possible and take it down as soon as possible. That's partly to do with your pathing and setting the dragon attack up, but also also in terms of the rages in your spells effectively. If you do happen to use freeze spells, which I would recommend, I would make sure you are trying to freeze other defenses around the air defense as well. So make sure you're trying to tag 
An Expo, a Tesla, Archer Tower, could be anything. The best value within that one spot. Don't just plonk the freeze on top of the air defense. Try and grab some other defenses to freeze around it as well. Whilst the Pekka can be used in a number of strategies, I'll tell you that in a second, I would highly recommend that you always remember that the Pekka can actually be a really good funneling troop because it can absorb damage from defenses, set the funnel for itself to then punch into the base, such as with the ever so popular Pekka Smash, Pekka Bobat, you might actually be able to use the Pekka themselves to funnel before they move into the base. If you do need help with funneling, I made an entire video breaking down every single aspect. You probably want to check that out. It will be one of the videos I feature in my description. Baby Dragon, nice and simple, you want to try and utilize the Enraged Bonus. If it is by itself with no other air troops, it does extra damage, and funneling is one of the best methods. Now, I did send in a couple of balloons here because if you do have, let's say, an Archer Tower tanked, you might actually be able to snipe that off to protect the Baby Dragon a little bit more, but the balloons are not necessarily always needed. However, the funnel is perfectly set with the Baby Dragon for the Archer Queen to walk around the other side of the base and do her thing. The Miners. Because they go underground, try and use that to your benefit. Now, I could have shown Queen Charge Miners, the hybrid. They are a very powerful troop in terms of a mass attack, and I would recommend using them, but I wanted to give you the tip of using the Miner to clean up. Just one Miner. After a Hog Rider attack, you might have buildings left in the center, clan castle, storages, builder hut. This could cause you to time fail. Now, I would recommend if you're doing a mass hog rider, if it's a war attack, you scout the base. Do you need to send in one miner to the center afterwards in order to help clean up? If you are doing legend attacks, for example, where you don't get to see the base, this miner can be incredibly useful as well because what it can mean is that even if you don't mean, need it in the middle, you might be able to use it on the back end of the base to tank a wizard tower as the hog riders are coming through. For the Electro Dragons, it goes without saying, try to utilize their chain value, try to keep them away from air defense or single infernos, but the main tip I want to give you is not to miss with your rage spell. Now, I know that sounds a little bit strange, but basically, guys, the E-Dragon is where the shadow is. So if we look at this one E-Dragon, it's quite a long troop. It will not be enraged, even though it looks right now like it is inside that rage spell. Look at the shadow. It is outside of it, and that is actually where the game calculates where the E-Dragon is. So because it's a long troop, it's easy to miss. Make sure that the Rage spell is on top of them shadows, and make sure you are freezing sweepers, because that will push your E-Dragons back quicker than they can attack. There is the Yeti Smash attack for the Yetis, but I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of the Yeti Blimp method, just in case anyone wasn't. I did mention all of this in my Siege Machines Explained video, which again, I'll put in the suggested videos down in the description. But essentially, you send in a battle blimp to an area with Yetis inside. You can rage it if you want. And the idea is that the Yeti mites will jump out onto the defenses. Notice that we also lured the clan castle. So not only are you getting good value, in this instance, a multi and a scatter shot, you can lure the CC. You can also take out an area of the base, which means that the queen will would walk exactly where we want her to go. The minion and the hog rider are one after another in the troop selection menu, which is how I've been going through this. But I want to combine them both together in this replay because the tips I want to give you for both troops are relevant to a queen walk or queen charge. Now, obviously, you can do a mass hog rider style attack. You can use minions to snipe off buildings, even defenses if they're ground targeting, such as the cannon 
Ganon, Morda, maybe even the Barbarian King. But just remember, the Hog Rider is a defense targeting troop, so you can use it similar to the Test Wall Breaker we mentioned to test an area for giant bombs, maybe a skeleton trap, but also to get deep into the base to lure clan castle troops. Now, this is really important if you are doing a queen walk or queen charge because you're not then dealing with the clan castle troops in the base itself. Now, for the minion, the tip I want to give is in relation to if there is a lava hound in the clan castle and it's to protect your healers. So when the lava hound pops, this is not always as relevant now because you can actually hit all of the lava pups in the poison because the radius has been decreased. A little tip for that is actually to put the poison on top of your queen. Think about it, if your queen is shooting up at the lava hound, they're going to pop around her, so put the poison on top of the queen, you should then hit most of them. However, you can send in just one little support minion, and their job is to take out the lava pups that are shooting at your healers. Because if your healers are to take any damage, it might be the difference breaker for if they do then hit a bomb later on in the raid. Some of you might have noticed in the Yeti blimp method that we used earlier, there was a Valkyrie. Now, the reason for that is if there is a skeleton trap in the area, the Valkyrie can just take them all out because of its spin attack, which can be really good. Now, you can use them to funnel, but some people like to use the Valkyries in a mass format. If they know they can get through that base easily, the Valkyries will wreck it. But they are very difficult to path initially. So my advice, if you plan to do that, is use a queen walk to one side of the base in order to set up the pathing on that side and the barbarian king to the other side. That means the Valkyries have nowhere else to go but into the base itself. Now, I've used some wall breakers just to demonstrate actually that they will move through and take out the walls incredibly fast. They are just attracted to them buildings, but they can still run off course. With the best will in the world, the Valkyries can move where you weren't quite expecting expecting, so be adaptable with your spells. Rage and heal spells are best for Valkyries, but make sure you're not too fixated on where you are going to use them. Watch where the Valkyries run, because sometimes they might go where you don't want them to. Whilst the Golem is pretty popular at Town Halls 8 and 9, it loses its popularity moving up through the game, just because there are other options. However, what you want to do for the Golem is use it to tank defences. Initially, that allows you to use wizards in order to create your funnel. I do that to the left and the right, taking out all of the trash buildings so my main force can come through the center. Now, the reason you use a golem over something else is because it has so many hit points. You even get the golemites, and what that means is you can use it to set the funnel, but also use them throughout the raid. Now they are protecting my heroes. If I had have sent Pekka or Valkyries in there, they would be protecting them as well. The witches can actually be pretty difficult to use. Whilst you can use one or two of them to set up the funnel, you're probably going to use these in a mass format, such as the witch slap attack strategy. My tip for you is to send a couple of giants in first. This will absorb the damage from the defenses, allowing your witch to spawn some skeletons and therefore protecting themselves. You're probably going to be attacking bases with single target infernos if you can, but be mindful of splash damages, wizard towers, bomb towers. You might have to freeze them so they don't wipe out a whole bunch of skeletons. We've already mentioned that the Lava Hound's primary use is as part of the Lava Loon. There's not a lot to say. It's basically a flying golem which goes to the air defense. You can use this to supplement other strategies such as dragons, so long as there's not a single target inferno to quickly take it out. However, you can get creative as well. If the Archer Queen is standing next to an air defense and you know that the Lava Hound is going to pop, you might be able to use a rage spell to make sure the Lava Pups take down the Archer Queen, but obviously be careful of any splash such as multi-target infernos. Remember when I explained that the archer could be used to snipe off a building. The bowler is one of the best troops for doing this because you can use the bounce value. You can often take out air defense, mortars, 
defenses that are more commonly to the edge of the base. But you always want to be looking for this because you can be surprised as to how many bases this is a vulnerable aspect and how many areas you can do it. In this example, taking down two air defenses. Now, the building you are trying to take down behind the one the bowler is shooting at, you have to make sure has less hit points or the same in order to take it out. If it has greater, then it might survive such as this instance. You might be able to snipe it off a little bit easier with another troop. For example, if I had an archer, I could do it, but I tried to get clever, send in a wall breaker. The first one went down, the next lot, take it out. Pretty awesome, but make sure you are just checking the base, guys. Not only does it set up the funnel, you can snipe a defense absolutely amazing value. Whilst the Ice Golem can be used in attacks such as the Bowlers and Witches to really get good value, one of my favorite methods is from a Sui Hero. Look at the freezing effect that the Ice Golem gets. Two Archer Towers, a Cannon, and the Inferno Tower. Now, if you are just sending a Queen into an area, not a Queen Walk, just a Hero Dive, that is sending your heroes in just to get value and then they go down. The Ice Golem for 15 troop capacity does help to tank initially whilst also getting the freezing effect. So it can be a huge benefit to some of the Sui Hero or Hero Dive methods. Make sure you are considering it if you are planning on just sending your hero in, getting value and letting her go down. Now I know that I am attacking one of my lower town hall levels in this video. It was just two of my accounts that I threw into a clan in in order to break down these techniques as best as possible. Let me know any other tips you have for the troops down in the comments. The next video I will be doing in this series is on the spells. If you do want to see the funneling video I referenced, that one is in the description alongside the Grand Warden walk video, which is linked right on top of my face. If you want to learn the positives, negatives, everything about the Grand Warden walk, I'd recommend having a watch of that one. But if not, guys, be sure to take care and we will see you again next time.